What's going on Legionnaires and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell and make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. Now for this video, we're going to be jumping into our Indie Comics Weekend, where every weekend we cover at least one indie comic. Now for today, we're going to be covering three indie comics starting with Agents of Eden, issue number one, coming from Black Moss Comics. Now, if you're wanting to get caught up on all the indie comics that we've been covering, go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It's going to get you completely caught up on every single indie comic that this channel has covered. Now, this comic doesn't have, it doesn't have a credit page. So, I don't have the full names of creators and writers and letters like I usually do. But on the front cover, we do have three names, which is Dianski, Richards, and Redula Jr. Now, I don't know too much about this comic. It, it was a comic that was dropped into my email, so I figured we'd give it an opportunity, give it a chance, and see how it does. So with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. All right, guys, so the opening pages, it brings us to a Knight Templar with glowing red eyes and a gut wound that seems to be bleeding profusely. And the Templar reminisces of a, a past time. A time when they were able to crush their enemies through sheer numbers alone. They could line up in the field or simply set up camp within earshot of an enemy and they would, they would flee. They would scatter. Fear and respect for the cross that they bared on their chests had allowed them free passage through most of the known world at the time. Because tales of the consequences for dissent were widespread and they were gruesome. But these are luxuries that they no longer can afford. Because there's so many less of them at this point in history. For all he knows, he could be the last of the Knights Templar. And as the Knight makes his way through this building, bleeding, trying to make it, to this machine. Now this this machine is referred to as Dios, which means dedicated internal operating system. And so this Knights Templar seems to be living in a time era where technology has advanced. This isn't the, the, the Knights Templar of old. Now he puts himself inside of this machine and the idea is that this machine is going to repair whatever issues or ailments he has. And while he is in here, he rests. And while he rests, we get a, a glimpse back at his past, at where he began. And what we see is the Knights Templar of old. And they're fighting in the name of God. And they kill. They murder. They, they do gruesome, horrible acts against their other humans. And after this battle ha has come to be, after the people have been killed, one of the Knights stands out. He tells the commander that he has no honor because these weren't soldiers, they were they were women and children. And this knight refuses to believe that any god would call for this, that would ask for you to kill women and children. And the commander tells him like, you would be so bold to not only question me, but you would question our lord. And the knight's response is yes, 100%. I will question it every step of the way. If this is the will and the architecture of the Almighty, then I want nothing to do with it. I denounce him 100%. And in those times, when you denounce the Lord in such a manner, you were put to death. There was no question about it. And so we see three men, naked, bound at the hands, being escorted by, by other Knights Templars on horses, essentially, and assuming that they're going to their execution. And kind of their last words here are, as powerful as you are, as this brotherhood is, you will always fall short because your power is given by a false god. Now, before they are able to get executed, somehow they break loose of their shackles. And we see the three naked men literally ravage and butcher their once brothers in arms. And one says, you know, we'll never find peace, not after this. And our Knight Templar tells us, you know, he would rather be hunted across time than serve a, a mercenary to a vengeful god. And so over the years that followed, their numbers grew. But they had to remain hidden because they had many enemies. They were a voice for all who couldn't speak. 
The ranks were filled with unsung heroes and warriors. Droves of people needing their help, but scores more sought to impede their efforts, to try to kill them. And this is where we see green people, maybe goblins or something of that nature, it doesn't really specify too much on exactly who they are or what they are. But we see is the Knights Templar protecting the people, doing what God would actually want and not what the Knights Templars were actually doing. And through his courage and through his skill, he won every battle up to this point. But the attacks are becoming more frequent. The Knights Templar, the, the cross on their chest has really become more of a target than anything else. You know, across the centuries, their numbers had dwindled and the causes became harder to defend. The targets on their backs increased in size at every turn. And so many good knights fell in retribution to the actions that were not their own, templed under the weight of their predecessors. And what we see is the Knights Templars making their escape, trying the best they can because they got ambushed. And he has his brothers dying left and right next to him, and a, a woman in a red cloak offers some kind of safe haven, an opportunity to hide away. And at first they're confused, they don't understand why why she would be so willing to help them. But she tells them, you know, you guys seem different. Something tells me that you don't wear that symbol for the same reason that everybody else does. And so it's really showing, you know, over the years they've had to, they've had to hide away. They fought their battles, but also ran and hid when they had to. And as new eras of weapons and technology descended upon the world, so evolved the, the evil machinery of man, unbridled by the moral constraints of the earlier days. And this is where we see two Knights Templars kind of surrounded by guys in armor and what seems to be kind of like battle suits. But no matter what, these Knights Templars, they fight. And they haven't stopped fighting for centuries. They fight for those who need the help. And this is when we pick up in present day. And he's waking up from his injuries. Bandaged up and fixed up by someone here that they don't really say what her name is. But it appears to be one of his teammates. And she's just letting him know, like, you were in bad shape. But I've also seen you at death's door before. So, you know, with a grin on my face... I'm asking you, like, why did you call us here this time? And he asks, like, are the others here? Because I'm going to answer your questions all in due time. And so he prepares to get ready, and he asks just for a min minute by himself. And what we see is him going through the ages, the Knights Templar being there, helping the military, plan strategic battles, and do what needs to be done to help ensure the fight is won. We see him going firsthand into foxholes with a pistol and, and not just neutralizing, but eliminating their enemies. Fighting whatever great evil in the world is out there. You know, throughout the centuries, his kind has operated in the shadows with an unparalleled dedication to an unwavering focus on eliminating as much of that evil as possible. But today, everything has been tested. This week, this past year, he has seen greater evil than he ever knew existed. For as much darkness as they have cast out in the world, just as much seems to be emerging since the enchantment. And his kind is no more, because he's a broken, beaten individual who has finally had enough. But he knows he is not alone. Because now he has the Agents of Eden. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Personally, I don't know. Uh, I, I have to, I'm going to have to read issue number two. So issue number one just did not give us enough detail. It didn't even give us this guy's name or his superhero name. Now, after I did some research, I found out... That the, the woman wearing the, the blindfold over her eyes, that's Blind Faith, and his name is the Last Templar. But would have been really awesome if we had gotten their names throughout the story, and then when we're introduced to the Agents of Eden, we had got some kind of introduction to their names as well. This story was, was lacking so much dialogue is the issue I had. You know, I like a good story that doesn't have an overabundance of dialogue, but this one seemed to be really needing just a little bit more dialogue, just to, so we knew who we were dealing with. And I would really like the last Templar to somehow be distinguished away from other Templars when we're introducing him, because it was really hard to, 
to figure out which one was our, our last Templar and which one was the bad guy. Because they're all looking exactly alike. Now the artwork I thought was absolutely awesome. You know, it's great stuff. I, I really do enjoy this type of artwork. But as it stands, I, I'm not going to give my, my, full, my full opinion on this yet until I, I read a few issues in. I'm going to give this one the, the benefit of the doubt. It seems to be having the possibility to really build up a great story here. So we're going to give it a chance. We're going to dive into a couple more issues of this, you know, later on in the next couple weeks. And we'll see if it's really worth investing into any further than that. But yeah, if you guys have not yet, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.